Because it has begun in a great way, we as a church also, we need now to stand in the cup and move on powerfully. Today being the first day of our, uh, the first Sunday of our year 2024, I have a very powerful subject for us. And this is what we are going to start with. And I want to believe God is going to bless us together. There is a subject that is very, very powerful. At the beginning of the year. Because I know you have so many plans this year. Even as a church, we have wonderful plans. And we believe we are going far. Remember, the Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. Now, this one means as a church, we need to have our vision. We need to have a vision as a church. And not only a church, even in your family, you need to have a vision, a family vision, so that God can help you to move to the next level. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Besides the family vision, you as an individual, you also need to come up with your own vision. If you have the right vision, and you have a family vision, and you also have the church vision, my brother, my sister, I want to tell you that this year, you are going to go far. Because already you know where you are going. Here we are at this point. It is just the starting point. It is only the starting point. Now there is somewhere we are going. Capture the vision of this year. Capture the vision of your church. Capture the vision of your family. And also capture the vision of, of your own. Your Wonderful. Now, as you work out all this, there is a subject that I want to put across today so that we can begin with it this great new year. Which subject is this? This is about biblical decision making. Decision making. I want to tell you something. Each one of us has something to do. Each one of us already has a vision. There is something you want to do. But before you make that decision, I want to give you some guidelines. This one will help you not to miss your mark. This one will help you not to miss your goal. Before you make any decision in life, here are the biblical steps that you need to follow so that your decision may not bring about problems in the future. Remember, your life lies in the decision you make today. So you happen to make a wrong decision today, then it means your whole life will be in a mess. That is why I cancel you, my brother, that you follow these steps correctly so that you can move to the next level. What are we saying? The decision we make today determines what 
you will achieve in life. The decision I make today determines what I'm going to get this year. The decision you make today determines what you will get at the end of this year. That is why as your spiritual father I have to guide you through so that at the end of the day you don't get a miss. Decisions are to be made when one is sober. I repeat it again. Decisions are to be made when one is sober. Not as a result of being forced by circumstances. Remember this. Some of us, we make decisions not because we are, that is the thing we, 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 we really wanted to, uh, the step we really wanted to take. But we are forced by certain circumstances. You reach at the point, you don't know what to do. You are living in a challengeful circumstances. Then you reach at the point of making any decision to fit your, your circumstances. I want to tell you this, my brother. Never make any decision when you are not sober. You need to be on your senses. Because the decision you make will affect the entire life. to be in a hurry to make decisions. Decisions are to be made when one is sober. Not as a result of being forced by circumstances. When you are not in the actual or normal mood, you are not supposed to make any decision. When you are not in your actual Boots. When you are not in your normal moods, in other words, when you are not even much okay, you don't need to make any decision. Because any decision you make in life, as a result of the circumstances that are pushing you, that decision will not do you any good. You are not supposed to make any decision when you are not in the normal moods. My brother, my sister, you need to take good time in prayers, seeking the face of God, seeking the right direction before you come out with that decision. Amen. Amen. Now, number one, you have to begin with prayer. If you are writing, you have to write that one down. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the only way you can communicate with our maker. If you don't pray, then it means you don't love God. Because somebody who loves, you need time to communicate with him. God communicates to us in many ways. He communicates to us through his word. Your lifestyle. So that we can move to the next 
level together. You need to frame your attitudes into one trust. Into one trust and obedience as you commit your decision in prayer. There's no reason to be fearful in decision making when you are secure in the knowledge that God has, has your best interest in mind. Understand this, my brother. God has something good for you. That is chapter number 29 and verse number 11. The Bible says that he knows the good plans he has upon our lives. Plans that are not, are not to harm us. The plans that are going to give us a good future and a hope. Having known that, you need now to stand up in the cup. In prayers. Thanking God. Because of the good plans we have. Upon our lives. And then besides that now, you also now present your petition to him. So that God can see you through. I counsel you once again, my brother. That last year, if you never prayed, this is the year whereby you need to stand in the cup and they begin seeking the face of God seriously. God is faithful enough to perform all the miracles we need in our lives. But He cannot do it if we don't request for it. If there is nothing going to happen in your life this year, if there is nothing that is going to happen in your life this year, then it means your prayer life is very low. It means that your prayer Prayer life is very low because God can never lie. He cannot come against his own word. He must fulfill his word. He is faithful. God is not a human being. He cannot change. What he has said, he means it. So it is upon me and you, my brother, to stand in the camp this year and to make sure we are moving in the next level through prayers. So plan your life today. Plan your life this January. Have your time table. Make sure you have times to pray every day. And through that, God is going to bless your life. The book of Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Yes. Plans to prosper you. And not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. Those are the plans God has upon your life this year. But you see, this one can just remain like that without doing anything in your life. Activate it. Because God has spoken it to you. Now you have the key to activate it or open it. This one you just open through prayer. And you, you remind God that this is your work. You spoke to us in the beginning of the year. That you have a good plan for us. Now I present my vision in your hands. Because you have a good plan for us. 
Now, Father, intervene in this. And see me through in this. That I may have a new testimony. This year, it will work. It will work. It will work. It will work. God is not a man to lie. It will work. It will work. Remember, when it doesn't work, it doesn't mean that God has refused to work. It means you failed to pray. And some people only pray once. And they think it is enough. Look at this as, uh, uh, saying here. Cameraman, you can also uh, show the people who are following us on YouTube. Uh, we are using this one here. Push. Push. In prayers, we need to push. We need to push. We need to pray until something happens. If it has not happened, we need to begin to pray again. And this year we are not going to be quiet. We will pray and pray again. And if something happens, so you want your vision to be actualized. The secret is here. Push this year. Push this year. Push this year. Pray until something happens. Now look at the book of Matthew number 21 and verse 22. The, the Bible says this. This is the book of Matthew. 21 and verse 22. And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. So anything you ask in prayer, the Bible says you will receive if you ask in faith. Now this one means as you continue praying, you need to have faith that God is going to work out whatever you are asking for. Some people pray are this. They pray without believing. When you are not believing, there is no need to pray. Because God is faithful. Now if you are not believing, what is the purpose of praying? So you better keep quiet. You only, you need to believe that is number one. And now move forward in the prayers. And to divine your decision. Yes, divine your decision. Ask yourself if the decision involves a moral or non and moral areas. <laughs> it is actually a little easier to discern the will of God in moral areas. Because most of the time, you will find a clear direction in God's word. If God has already revealed his will in scriptures, your response is to obey. The moral areas still require the application of biblical principles. However, sometimes the direction is harder to distinguish. You need to sit down. Look at your decision. There is this saying in Luya Land. I don't know about other areas. But in Luya Land, there is this saying that is so powerful. What does that mean? What does that mean? Let's just come back to, uh, uh, to the normal. 
A normal way. Let me put it in a normal way. Sometimes we eat, isn't it? In fact, not sometimes, but always. <laughs> isn't it so? So, you just take a banana, you put it in your mouth. What is Hunyanyak? What is Hunyanyak? Chewing. Yes, without chewing, you just want to swallow. You take a piece of mace, that is a baby joma, put it in your mouth, you don't chew. You just want to swallow. What will happen to you? What will happen to you? <laughs> I can see our sister Josephine and Ashika. <laughs> what will happen to you? Eh? Utanyongwa. You see? And so do our decisions. We don't need just to wake up one morning and now you say this is my direction. You might fail. Define it. Have time to look into it. Plant it well. Consider some of the consequences that might come through it. Put everything in order. Make sure it is well. It will not affect the other people around you. Define your decision. Uh, 119 and verse 105. Psalms 119, verse 105. The Bible says this. Your word is a lamp to my feet. Your word is a lamp to my feet. And a light to my path. Your word is a lamp to my feet. And a light to my path. This one means your decision must be in line with the word of God. Because the word of God is the lamp. To our feet, the light, and to our paths. So your decision this year must be in line with the word of God. When you want to succeed and achieve everything you need this year, make sure that your vision is in line with the word of God. Besides that, my brother, my sister, you will waste a lot of time. You will waste a lot of resources. You will waste so many things. And you will end up regretting. Saying, I wish I knew. Better not eat today. Better know it today. Yes, Avadan we chew Elohi. Better know it today. Number three. Be ready to accept and to obey God's answer. Yes, number three. Be ready to accept and to obey God's answer. Be ready to accept and to obey God's answer. In other words, we need to be flexible. Flexible. Yes, flexible. That we are ready even to change towards 
God's direction. What I'm saying is this. You might be having your plan this year. <laughs> but what is the voice of God in that plan that you have? What is God saying about that? So when you want to succeed in that plan, listen to the voice of God. Now move as by the direction of God. You will succeed. But when you just move in your own way, you may not succeed. You may not succeed. So follow the words of God. Follow the direction of God. Be ready to accept what God says. It is unlikely that God will reveal his plan. Obey. This one could be your problem and my problem. God might not reveal his plan to you if he already know that you are not ready to adhere to his plans. He will not. Because God does not waste time. And once he understands that you are even more than willing to change. No, if he understands that you are more than willing to, to obey and follow his will, then he will reveal his will to you. That you may succeed. And they will be very happy. So what we are saying is this, brothers. <laughs> we need to be focused. We need to be focused. Not only on our vision. But to the voice of God. <laughs> because our future. Lies in the word of God. For us to succeed. We need we need God to intervene in our lives so that we can succeed. Without that, we will toil in vain. Proverbs number 3, <coughs> verse 5, and also verse 6. Proverbs number 3. Verse 5. What does the Bible say? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Hey, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Yes, just trust God. The reason why we are failing, we pretend to be knowing more than our Creator. You fail. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Amen. There is no way a student can be a uh, 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 can know much. Yes, there is no way a student can know great things compared to his teacher. But today, students are very smart. <laughs> In fact, they want to teach their teachers. Who is fooling who? <laughs> we tell God, you know what? This is how it's supposed to go. We also want to teach God how to program things on, or here on earth. Who is fooling who? What does the Bible say? Trust God in all, uh, with all your hearts and do not depend on your own understanding. Yes, I know you know something good. 
I also know something good. It is good to know some things. But it is good to know the will of God upon our lives. Having a plan is not bad. Having a vision is not bad. But your vision must be in line with the word of God. So working outside these plans of God will only result to failure. Me, I don't want to fail this year. Why do you want to fail this year? Now God is speaking to us. In the beginning of the year, that plan well. Look at this one. What is this that is speaking to you? What direction is he, is he giving you? When you follow that direction, my at the end of the day, you will have a reason to smile. You will have something to testify. Because God has done it. I cancel you, my brother, my sister. Don't move in your own direction. See the direction of God And you are going to succeed You will be victorious And the people will wonder They will come asking How did it happen You knew the secret You began by prayers You saw the direction from God And now God intervened in your stress And now here you are praying I can't tell you my brother my sister, see the direction of God this year. Do not move alone. Let God move with you. Let the Holy Spirit move with you. You will succeed in everything. Wonderful. Verse number six, the book of Proverbs number three says this. Proverbs number three, verse six. Seek his will in all you do. And he will show you which path to take. This is great. This is wonderful. I repeat. Seek his will. Seek his will. And he will show you which path to take. Seek his will. Yes. Seek his will. And when you seek his will, he will now show you which path to take. And when he shows you the path to take, you can never fail. Because he cannot lead you to a wrong path. You can only lead yourself to a wrong path. But when he leads you, he won't lead you to a wrong path. Number four. Number four. Exercise your faith. Exercise your faith. Remember. Remember. That decision making is a process. And sometimes it takes time. You may have to, uh, to resubmit your will over and over again to God. Throughout the process. Then by faith. Which pleases God. Trust Him with a confident heart. That He will reveal His will. Remember. To exercise your faith. You know, Christianity is not just about hearing and going. And especially here in this church. We don't just come to listen and go. We need to be doers of the word. 
When we want to succeed in life, we need to learn to become doers of the word. Not just listeners. The reason why people don't move to the to other levels. They are very good at listening. When the preacher is preaching, they are so good listening. And even some who write some notes down. And they are so good uh, answering amen. But do you know what? After the sermon, write the papers they have been writing their notes on their desks and they leave. And the others, when they reach at home, where they place their books, they cannot even remember. They cannot even recall. Even the Bibles, they look for them on Sundays. They ask people around, have you seen my Bible? Where is my Bible? Where is my Bible? Aye. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to be such a Christian. I don't want to be such a Christian. You know, a Bible, the Bible, that is the word of God. It has to be near you at all times. How can you look for it? You can search for it in the whole house. Ah, no. <laughs> it won't work that way. Praise Jesus. Exercise your faith. Exercise your faith. It is stated very clearly in Swahili. Imani bila matendo. Imani bila matendo. So you have in faith. And then you are seated with your faith. The result is zero. You need now to work out. You need to wake up very early. Activate your faith. You know, failure. I can use an example of this phone. If you have a phone. You have a very good phone. Nice you, Zulu -san. Better than this one of mine. You don't want to uh, 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 to put in uh, some credit. You don't want to make any calls. You see, this phone will be of no use. But when you, you, you begin activating it, making calls to some people, then other people also will begin making calls to you. As you begin texting other people, they will do the same to you. I hear what I'm saying. But you have a very good phone like this. And you just keep it in your pocket. You just tell people around. You know what? I have a very good phone. You have a, I have a very good phone. And then you, you return your phone in your pocket. It will help you with nothing. Better give it to somebody who can make use of it. <laughs> Are you hearing? Yes. Are you hearing? Yes. Are you hearing? Yes. So this year, learn how to pray. Learn how to exercise your faith. Try to work out small, small things that God is speaking to you. Beginning with prayer. Beginning with prayer. Do small, small things. And God will work it out. The book of Hebrews number 11. And verse number 6. The book of Hebrews 11 verse 6. The Bible says this. And without faith. It is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe 
Lazima amini that God exists and that he rewards those who honestly seek him. Yes. Hebrews number 11 verse 6. The Bible says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. When you don't have faith, my brother, when you don't have faith, my sister, you can never please God. You can never please Him. In whatever you do, you can never please Him. And I say, that because anyone who comes to him anyone who comes to him must believe the Bible does not use the word should should Labda. the Bible is using the word must you must believe that number one God exists and number two God rewards when you go before him number one believe that he exists that is the first one number two believe that you will get your reward at the end of the day without the two you cannot please him you cannot please him and it is very, very easy that is why we are here because we are believing that he is and because we are believing that this year he is going to reward us that is why we are here let that be your faith as you walk about number five seek concrete direction yes Seek concrete direction. You need to do some investigation. You don't just wake up in the morning and begin doing your own things. No. Do some investigations. You want to begin a business. I know this year you have plans. I know you have some visions. There are things you want to do. Try to do some investigations. Don't just begin like that. You will fail. Do some investigation. There are people who have done better than what you want to do. It is not it is not wrong for you to ask them how did you go about this? And how did you succeed in this? What's wrong in, it, in that? The people want to do without even consulting anyone. It is good but it is dangerous. So it is important to know how to work out. It is important to ask people as we gather about the information as we do some investigation as we do some evaluations it is also important to get some information from the direction of God. In other words what God is saying about that Action. That one is very important. Gain practical and personal information. Gain practical and personal information that relates to the decision. And begin writing down what you learn. 
fools. That one is very important. You need to write down some things. As you gather the information, there are things you might forget. So when you put in writing, when you are about to forget, you can just go back to your books. And that's why you know sometimes it's also important to write down these verses. These verses that we are giving you, they will be of help sometimes. You can go back and make some references when you are forgetting. What are we saying? Don't just begin making your decisions anyhow. Seek concrete direction. Begin doing some investigation, evaluating and gathering some information. Ask people, those people who have already made it, they have some secrets. They know things you don't know. It is not wrong to ask them. That one does not mean that one does not mean that you are foolish. In fact, that one is making you to be somehow clever. Because there are things you want to know so that you can succeed. It is my prayer that this year you are going to succeed whether the devil likes it or not. Number six, you need to obtain counsel. You need to obtain counsel. This is very important. And this is where many people fail because they want to do their things on their own. They say that this is my decision. Nobody has to decide for me. Yes, it is true. Nobody has to decide for you. But sometimes it is important as a child of God to obtain counsel. To obtain counsel. To obtain counsel. People may direct you in the right way where you didn't know. It is important, my brother, to obtain counsel. In difficult decisions, it is wise to get spiritual and practical counsel from the godly leaders in your life. And this is why God is praying about the spiritual leaders near you. And this is why such like churches we are here for you. That we may give you counsel. We are not just here to make noise. We are not just here to, uh, to, to speak other stories. We are not just here to do some entertainment that people, so that people can feel happy. No. We are here to help you. We are here to counsel you. We are here to give you the direction so that God can bless you. That is our work. So we need to obtain counsel. You need to know your spiritual leaders. And sometimes to be close to him. Talk to him. Don't fear. Talk to him. Seek counsel. He will give you direction on how to go about some things. The book of Proverbs number 15 verse 22 Proverbs 15 22 Plants fail for lack of counsel but with many advisors they succeed Ah, are you hearing this? Plants fail for lack of counsel. They succeed. Now, I have a question. Who is your advisor? Who is your mentor? 
Wewe unamfuata naye. Because you are advisor. Sababu mshauri. You are mentor. Na unayefuatilia. You are leader. Kiongozi wako means a lot in your life. Ana anaokoza vitu vingi kwa kila. You in the wrong way. Unafanya mabuzu mbaya. Then you will fail. But you choose in the right way. Then you will succeed. What are we saying? We need advisors in life. We are not supposed to move just like that. For we don't know everything. And because of that, we need to have some advisors to help us through. And this one will help us to move to the next level. Because of time, number seven. Number seven. Make a list. Make a list. Make a list. I want to ask a very simple question. If I happen to give you 10,000 Kenya shillings right now, then I tell you you can now go to Naivas supermarket. What will you buy? <laughs> what will you buy? I've given you 10,000. I've instructed you to go to Quick Mart or even Naivas. What will you buy? Just one person to try. My brother, I can see you are raising up your hand. Hey, what will you buy? Amen. The first thing you do. Keep your I will sit down. Listen. I end supermarket neighbors ama quick mart sindio yes. lakini yeye anasema kitu ya kwanza nitakachi the first thing i will sit down continue yes. then i make my choice then achukue kalamu aanze kuandika ehe the things that he wants to buy ehe then from there sasa aende the supermarket <laughs> Pigia makofi mazuri. Wonderful. Huyo ni our brother Mugeni, Felix. What about you? Let me hear from you. From you. Nikusikie tu pia kidogo kutoka kwa. Hiyo ndio kulingana na Felix. Yes. Nimekupatia 10,000 shillings sasa hivi. Nakwambia nenda supermarket. Nunua vitu nataka. Utanunua nini? Utafanya nini? Eh eh. Yeye anasema nikisha pata my 10000 pap number 1 natoa fungu la 10 kwanza nitumie pastor yenda kanisa eh eh Nikisha tu mafungu la 10 yenda kanisa ataingia kwake sasa akaijini aandike vile yeye amesema list yake naenda nunue vitu anataka Wonderful Josephine, if you want to know what I find, I need to make 10,000 Kenya shillings. What I find, I need to make 10,000 Kenya shillings. What I find, I need to make 10,000 Kenya shillings. Sasa, this is very good. Anasema, yeye anataka kuweka tofauti kabisa na sisi wana. Sikileza yu maneno mazito. Kini ya kwanza? Atatoa fungula kumi. Atatoa fungula kumi kama yeye. Atakuwa me, kwanza anajua 10,000 kumbe fungula kumbi ni 1,000. Ok, sawa sawa ye. Tisa imebaki nayo. Iyo tisa amebaki nayo. Mi ni mama wa nyumba anajua nini ya mbaka mbaka. Ye ni mama wa nyumba hata akiwa hapa anajua unga imepungua. Mbaka hakuna netu waka hiko chonjo. Hiko chonjo kapisa naenda. Sika ichini, mina na direct kwa tuka. Aweska chini, anaenda direct wapi kwa duka. Inaanza kupik vitu sasa. Anaanza kupik vitu. Sabahu netu wakiko jonjo, anajua juhudi ya kuna sukari, majani, mkati. Yo hiko sasa takuwa ni memaliza. Atakuwa memaliza. Lakini, usifanya hiko. Kini ya kuta nisi. Mgoje, amemaliza mizuri sana. Anamaliza anasema laki, musifanye, hivyo. Ajini adika list vitu ya nyari, hakuna mwenye. Mwena utafiku kutachaga nyikiwa. 
Are we together? Uko pamoja. Sometimes you ask yourself. Wakati mwingine jiulize swali. Which decision is best? Njia gani ambayo ni sawa? The decision that satisfies those priorities. Njia ambayo inakuweka sahihi na hizi Yeah, sometimes it is good to ask yourself questions and get answers from yourself again. That is why you are not supposed to be in hurry. Because the decision you make will affect your entire life. The decision you make today will affect your entire life. You need to, to have enough time to prepare in prayers so that you don't make a wrong decision. And if you didn't know today as I speak many people are crying many people are mourning many people don't know what to do many people are in jail why? because of the decisions they made without proper counsel I counsel you my brother my sister even as the year begins don't be in hurry don't be in hurry take good time in prayers seek the direction of God seek the revelation of God remember this that God has the best for you and that is why he has called you here he never called you here in vain he has a purpose in your life so you need good time to meditate upon his word to seek his concrete direction so that you may not fail and lastly great people you now need to act on your decision you need now to act on your decision you need now to act on your decision you need now to act on your decision some people are very good when it comes to matter speaking when it comes to matter speaking some of us we are very good but when it comes to matters acting we are very poor we are very poor I counsel you my brother that this year you will not just sit and wait you will begin acting on your decision your faith so that God can move powerfully in your life even to activate your programs because this year my brother my sister you must succeed this year my sister you must succeed this year my brother you must move to the next level that is why we are beginning by saying plan well plan well act well seek the face of God take time in prayer make priorities make a list and then make sure God is involved in each step you will succeed and the, at the end of this year you will come back here to thank God to thank your pastor to thank your fellow brethren that you really helped me I want you to try this I want you to act on this so that you can move to the next level I want to see you growing I want to see you moving I want to see you being established in the many things you are going to do this year Amen Amen
Julika ne wa pare, na i Julika ne wa ba o.